All right, guys, so here's the review of the Ikigai Kazan. This is a new brand that's going to be launching on Kickstarter on the 23rd of August. So hopefully I'll have the review out by then. Full disclosure, they sent me the watch prototype to check out for the review, obviously, but it's a prototype, so I've got to send it back. But they did say if the Kickstarter was successful, they would send me a watch for free. But you know the score. It's not going to change the way I do my reviews. It's going to keep it 100% honest all the time, no matter what. So I'm going to do this a little bit differently with this video. I'm actually going to talk about the design language, which I don't normally talk about because I think it's a little bit... Yeah. But with this one, I think it's quite interesting. So question is, is the watch any good? Will you be interested in backing it? What are the differences when it comes to the prototype and the actual final version? Let's get down to it and find out. So here it is. And right away, I'm going to talk about the logo and the name. So I did actually pronounce this one right for a change. It is Ikigai because that's how they actually spell it phonetically on their website, thankfully which is very helpful, because I'm never normally that good at these names. I'm always butchering them, I think. So this has actually got a meaning as well. So you break it down into Iki, which actually means benefit or worth. And then Gai actually means benefit or worth. And then when you put them together, you get a reason for being, which is interesting, I guess. And then also you've got this paper crane, which is also quite symbolic. That's actually symbolic for hope and healing, but you probably already knew that one. It's a bit more common, but anyway. Just thought that was interesting. Now, we've got the warranty card here. And this is actually in bamboo, which is quite nice. Do like that. As is the box. Just take that out for a second, pop it to one side. And we've got another extra strap here too. And here's the actual box, again. Got that engraved crane, paper crane, and then the Ikigai. It's really nice, do like it. And then obviously you have the watch itself, and a nice little cushion. So it is a nice little box, do like that. You can actually use it for quite a lot of different things. So it is handy. So now, if we talk about the watch itself, you can see it's quite an interesting design with this. Yes, it's quite thick, but that is because it's actually based on a volcano. So the Kazan, in the actual name on this, zoom in on the dial, because that is what the actual model name is, Kazan. That's actually Japanese for volcano. So like I say, it is actually based on a volcano kind of design. So you can see we've got that sloped case. And we've also got that sloped in a rotating vessel as well. Showing like the inside of a volcano, and obviously the other bit being the outside of it. I'll probably pop some pictures on screen so you can see the designs and stuff, what they're on about. I just think it's quite interesting. But seeing as I zoomed in, let's talk about the rest of this dial. So there's a few different colours of this. With this one, obviously this is the black and orange. That's because this is the fire version. They also have a air, water, earth. Even with this black one, this has actually got a sunburst effect. Obviously a bit bit more prominent on some of the other colours, but you still see it quite well on this black one. Do quite like that. And then we've got that pretty distinctive markings around the outside and on that inner rotating bezel. So from what it says on their website, this is they went for like a minimalist Tron-esque design. Which I do quite like, it is quite cool. Definitely something a bit different. And then obviously everything's just printed, nothing applied. So we've got the logo again with the crane at the top. And then Kazan at the bottom and 200 meter water resistance. So if I zoom back out, we can talk about this strap quickly. So it's just a Tropic strap. I've been wearing it a bit, so it's got a little bit mucky. But as you expect, really nice, really comfortable. I've actually got quick release on that as well and it does actually say it's 22 mil so i don't even need to measure that and then with the buckle we have got that signed as well the nice logo and the branding so quickly show you the side of this again so we've got the crane on the crown and then on the inner rotating bezel we've just got the markings to show you which one's which but we'll talk about them in a bit. Before we do that, I'll quickly show you. This actually comes with another strap as well. 
So this is the strap it comes with. Again, we've got a quick release and we've also got a nice buckle, but this one isn't branded. I'm not too sure whether the final version will be. I would have assumed it would be. And they also told me that the leather will have the branding on as well. But again, this is just the prototype. It's not too bad. I prefer it on the rubber one to be honest, but I've actually been wearing it on another strap that I'll show you in a bit. But getting back to this, let's talk about the rest of these measurements then. Starting with that thickness. 14mm thick. As you saw on the strap, it's 22mm. So yep, yeah, 22mm. Now with the diameter, as I said, because it's a sloped case, this is going to be a bit of an interesting one. So if we measure it from the bottom, it's 42mm. But if we take it from the top, where it starts to slope, it's actually 40mm. So, again, just a bit of interest. Something a little bit different. And it's a really angular case, this. So, it's fully brushed. And then we've got that polished, I guess you're going to call it a bezel. But top part of the case, depending on how you want to look at it. Because obviously it's in a in rotating bezel. And then with the lug to lug, that's actually a little bit smaller than you'd expect for this kind of size of watch. And that's coming in at 49.3. So under the 50 mark, so that's always good. Now, I suppose I should probably show you the movement in action. It's an NH35. So we've got the usual. Pop it out once. There is actually a go state position on that. I know some people don't like that, I'm not overly bothered. And then pull it out again, obviously, second hand stops, got a hacking, and then we can change the time. Pop it back in, second hand re-engages. And that is a screw down crown, that one. And then with the inner rotating bezel, that isn't screw down, but they told me that it may be changed to a screw down one for the final version. They haven't actually decided yet. And obviously that's bi-directional. So at the moment, with it not being screwed down, you can possibly knock it and adjust it, which I guess isn't ideal, but like I say, they are debating changing that. So I'll quickly show you the case back, because this is also really nice. Again, carrying on the design theme. So we've got the volcano on there. Really nice, do like that a lot. And it is nicely raised as well. Also, if I zoom in, We've got some interesting bits around the outside. So we've got original series, which isn't that interesting. Got the think positive there at the top. Cherish time. Kazan to Andromeda. Stay humble, work hard. So I do quite like that. Ties in with the rest of the philosophy of the watch, I think. And the design language. Now let's test whether we've got sapphire crystal on it. Using the trusty diamond selector too. And yep, we have got a sapphire crystal. So that's always good. And it is actually just a flat sapphire crystal. No dome or anything on that, or curve, completely flat. But with the thickness of the watch, you don't really want a curved one as well. That's just going to add a bit too much bulk, I think. So I'll quickly show you, before we get onto the loom, what it's like on the two straps. So this is what it looks like on the Tropic strap. I do quite like that. I think it does go well. And obviously, you know, these are really comfortable. And again, with this black dial one especially, I think it does look nice. I don't know whether the other colours might have different colour straps, maybe. Not too sure with that one. But again, links are down in the description as always. Obviously, it is a rather tall watch, but I think it's just about manageable, not too big. And because it's got a bit of a slope on it as well, I think that does help slightly. So it's kind of like a tuner almost. But I'll quickly show you now what it's like on the other strap. So here's the leather strap it comes with. So like I say, I've not been wearing it much on this one. I just, I'm not overly keen on the colour. I don't think it matches that well. But it's comfortable enough. 
Perhaps it'd go better with some of the other colours, or perhaps you get different colours, I'm not too sure. But for me, this one just doesn't really work colour-wise. But I'll show you a strap I've actually been wearing on, which I think goes a bit better. So, here's the strap I've actually been wearing on quite a lot. So, once I took it off that Tropic strap, tried out the leather one, wasn't that keen on it. Decided to try it on this one that I had, which I actually got in from Nomad Watchworks. So, they sent me a few straps. This is one of them. Sent me in for free, so full disclosure. But I just think it suits it quite well. With the oversized buckle and the slightly thicker leather as well. I just think it fits the dimensions wise a bit better. And I do like the colour as well. I think that goes quite well with this one. With that orange. But anyway, we'll get back to the review now. So now, let's talk about the loom on this. Because this is actually quite cool. So you can see it lighten up a little bit. But let's charge it up, give it a proper chance. And as I say, it is quite interesting, the loom on this. With that interesting layer on the dial. That Tron-esque design. And we've also got loom crowns as well. Just a little bonus. So there's the loom crowns. Again, with the logo and then the rotating bit. And there's the dial. So you can see we've got a mixture of C3 and BGW9. Obviously, with the actual markers, indices, whatever you want to call them, around the outside, there isn't a great deal of space to have loom on there because it's just applied. It's not applied. It's just straight onto the dial. So there isn't a great deal. But I have been told they are going to add a bit more for the final versions. So hopefully that will last a bit longer because at the moment it does fade out fairly quickly but there's plenty of loom on the hands that's really good they last for quite a good amount of time then so no issues there and one other thing they may be adding as well which i've also been told they may be adding a loomed logo on the actual dial which i think would be a nice touch seeing as you've got it everywhere else you've got it on the crown and everything got it on the bezel why not do that too go all out but again you can see the rest of it fading quite quickly, but the hands, they stay a really good amount of time. So, so far, pretty good. If they're going to improve it, even better. So now, the all-important question, how much are these going to be? So, the retail price is actually $425. So, that's getting up there a bit. But, when it comes to the Kickstarter, you've actually got a pretty decent discount there. So the super early bird price is going to be $285, but that's going to be limited to 100 pieces. Then there's going to be an early bird, which is going to be 295 which is limited to 200 pieces. And then the next price tier from that is the normal one. Well, I say the normal one. There's no limit to how many there are. That's going to be 325 So really nice discounts. So if you do want to get in on this, I definitely recommend getting in on the Kickstarter one. Because obviously you're getting a far better price, albeit with Kickstart being a little bit risky. But as long as you know what you're getting into, you should be alright, I think. The question is, would I recommend you back it? Based off of this prototype, with what we've got, I think it's a pretty unique design. We've got pretty good loom on the hands. Yeah, the bezel and dial aren't brilliant, but I've been told that's going to get improved. We've got a nice action on the crowns. This one could be getting upgraded to a screw down. They might be adding loom on the logo. But other than that, this is pretty much what you're going to get. Got that really nice case back. You've just, I think it's a really interesting piece. So, I guess it's up to you. Whether you want to go for the Kickstarter or not. Or if you aren't that keen on the Kickstarter, possibly even wait till the production version. But then if you're doing that, it might not actually happen if not enough people back the Kickstarter. It's kind of the way it works. But if it was me, I think I, I probably would be tempted to back this. Just because it is something a bit different. And I do quite like the overall design of it. The ethos behind it, I guess. It's just something interesting, something a bit different. But that's it for this one, guys. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.